Ah, hello there. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed your weekend as much as I did. All right, we're going to be reading Chapter 9 today. Uh, it is Roger Street, and the subtitle is How a Boy Can Become a Grease Fire. But before we get started, a few days ago I was feeling pretty lonely, and I reached out to somebody who you may know, Mr. Gutierrez, and we had a conversation. I was kind enough to record it for you so everybody could watch. Check it out right here. <laughs> All right, so uh, seventh graders, I'm here with somebody who half of you might recognize. Actually, everybody should recognize him, but about half of you had him as a teacher. The, the marvelous, the wonderful, the respected, the esteemed, the professional, Mr. Gutierrez. From the sixth grade Thank science you. department. Wow. I should have you uh, introduce me to my classroom all the time. <laughs> <laughs> We're so happy to have you here today, Mr. Gutierrez. What have you been wa watching over this break? Is there anything that like you binge watched or? Oh, anything? TV shows? Yeah. TV shows, TV movies? Shows, movies, anything. Dude, I've been watching The Last Dance, Michael Jordan's uh, yeah. documentary. Dude, that thing is dope. Um, I mean, when Michael Jordan was playing, you know, he, you know, he, he started in, in the pros when he, in the 86 season, 85. And, uh, you know, I was maybe like four or five, five when he won his first title. Mm -hmm. And then I started watching it like on the second three feet. So it was pretty cool to like watch it now as an adult. Yeah. But man, he is, uh, I'm on episode seven and eight and I haven't, finish that yet this week but yeah he's uh he's some it's pretty impressive <clears throat> um what what have you been eating a lot of what's been your favorite snack uh well i just got some pomegranates mm -hmm. so i've been eating some pomegranates um did you pull them out i'm in my school? kitchen oh yeah dude yeah come on man i got a routine i might do a science video and put it on my youtube channel how to to eat a pomegranate Dude, I got the mangoes. Nice. I go to Costco. Yeah. It's uh, it's like prime time, tropical fruit season, so it's it's pretty good. Yeah. But I love hot sauce. Dude, I got all the hot sauces. That that's what I've been working on. I have a subscription to get hot sauces, and you oh. can use this for your uh, buffalo tofu. Is it I got some hot sauces. Heating this, yeah. Yeah. So I got a um the monthly subscription. But do you play video games? Oh yeah, man. Yeah, what well, do you, you've been playing. So here's the thing, I got um, I got two two kids, and I don't, I play. Um, we got a Switch, Nintendo Switch, so mm -hmm. I play with them. We play Smash Brothers and like, um, Mario Kart. So that's like a family. But then when they go to bed, I play Zelda, and oh, then I play okay. like Assassin's Creed and like FIFA. A bunch of my friends are on uh on uh on live so i play them since we can't even hang out now and I then know. uh i just got a 2k uh coming in um so i'm gonna play that my friend javon has it so we're gonna play that together what's after this is all over right like you know the everything goes back to normal you can go out and do anything you want to do what's the first thing you want to go out and do uh pho? yeah <laughs> I know we talked about hot pot too. Hot pot, pho. Yeah. Cause you can um, get pho to go, but it really just it's doesn't. Just not, it's not the same. It's yeah, not the same, yeah. man. And plus it's, it's camaraderie. Like, yeah, it's like, it's it's almost as hard as making your own meal. Cause you bring it home yeah. and you gotta like, you know, open it together the, the right proportions and all that stuff. Yeah, it's just like, you know, I'm, I'm waiting until they open up again before I go get some. Yeah, I haven't gotten any since. Yeah. Um, I want to yeah, do, do that. For sure. Yeah. So we, you know what we should do? Uh, we we should go get hot pot and then go see a movie. I miss movies. We gotta go see a movie. Yep. Yep. We go movie see theater. theater. Um, the last question I have is: Do you have any advice for students that might be watching this? Um, two things. Uh, I would say, be supportive of your families. Mm -hmm. don't like it's hard for everybody and uh make sure you take care of your make sure you take care of yourselves your family older siblings 
you got to make sure you take care of your younger siblings. They're going crazy. Um, help the families out. You know, do your chores. It's it's crazy for everybody. I know a lot of my students got, you know, things going on at home. So, um, second thing is, it was like when you are done taking care of yourself and your family, keep your brain active. You don't want to just sit in front of the TV. You don't want to just like mm -hmm. veg out. You know, like you want to keep your brain going because when we get next year, you're expected to be in, you know, whatever grade you're going into. I got to give a shout out to uh, Mr. Evans for inspiring me to, to do the, the facial hair. You know, I didn't want to feel left behind. So I it's like, you know what? I don't got any of you kids trying to make fun of me because my facial hair. So I'm just going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Now's the time. To, I mean, I'm growing the hair out. I, you know, barbershops are closed. I can't, I can't do it. So. Yeah. Hair's going back to normal. Right. We're going wild over here. All right. Thank you, Mr. Goots. All right. What did you think? It's pretty good to see Mr. Gutierrez. I haven't seen him in months. All right. Chapter 9, How a Boy Can Become a Grease Fire. Gregory Pitt's friends loved him so much that they told him the truth. And the truth was he smelled dead, like rotten. It wasn't that he was rotten, but just that he smelled like his body had mistaken its organs for garbage, and that he was essentially a walking, talking trash can. And on this day, of all days, that smell just wasn't going to cut it. So, in an act of service and sheer desperation, Ramar Vaughn, Joey Santiago, and Candace Green, Gregory's crew, decided to help him out. Because today was a day of romance. Before we get going, you sure you good, Candace? Joey asked. I heard what happened to Bryson. Bryson was Candace's cousin. He'd gotten jumped the day before. Yeah, it's cool. Bry's a tough kid, Candace said. Plus, we're walking that way, so as soon as we get done with Loverboy here, I'm going to stop by and see him. Cool. Well, first thing we need to do is get you smelling right. Ramar, who they call Remy, said to Gregory. They had all met up by the benches in front of the school. You got the stuff, right? Candace asked Remy. You know it. What is it? And why are you talking about it like it's Gregory caught himself? You know what? It don't even matter as long as it works. Oh, it works, Joey said, bouncing his eyebrows. Remy dug around his backpack and pulled out a can of body spray. Now, Justin gets this stuff from the gas station. He says it's basically deodorant for your whole body. Justin was Remy's older brother, and he was always right. Let Remy tell it. He popped the top off the canister. Close your eyes, and then... Pssst, he sprayed Gregory from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. A spritz or two even got in his mouth sending Gregory gagging and coughing. Hold still, Candace ordered, while Remy spun Gregory around and sprayed all down his back. It smelled like it, it smelled like a combination of burnt flowers and burnt rubber. But that was better than Gregory's normal smell, the smell of all-day funk. No spraying, Miss Walkley yelled, pointing at Gregory and his friends. You know the rules. Go away if you want to spray. Miss Walkley's frustration came from the fact that there was always somebody spraying something in the hallway. Always a perfume or cologne that was supposed to help, but ended up sticking, but ended up taking stink up to stank. But this was a special case. Either way, Miss Walkley's outrage was hilarious to Gregory, Remy, Joey, and Candace, so the four of them cracked all the way up. Go away if you want to spray! Candace repeated with a hoot. She's a poet and she don't even know it. A rapper that looked like a napper, Remy followed. A spitter way too bitter, Joey came in third. All their jokes matched the corniness of Miss Walkley's non-joke, which made them laugh even harder. Gregory half-choking because laugh plus, plus spray equals choke. They started walking. But they weren't walking home like they normally did. They lived in the Southview Apartments, but decided today that they would walk over to Rogers Street because that's where Sandra White lived. Gregory had been trying to work up the courage to tell her that he liked her and wanted to know if maybe they could be boyfriend and girlfriend. 
even though he hated the way that sounded. It sounded trash. Together was what he preferred to call it. He had told Remy, Joey, and Candace that he wanted to do this, and they were in full support and along for the ride. Not to mention, Candace was the only one who knew where Sandra lived. She and Sandra were closer when they were younger, but they were still cool. Even though they were all in support of Gregory shooting his shot, they also told him that he needed to prepare. He needed to make sure he was ready and to put his best foot forward. First and foremost, he needed to not smell like a forward foot. He needed to smell better than the lunchroom, better than the locker room. Yeah, so I just hit you with the ooh, and now you're ready for some la-la, Remy said. He was always saying corny stuff like that, mainly because he swore he was some kind of mastermind when it came to approaching girls, thanks to Justin, even though Candace told him every chance she got that he wasn't. I think you hit him too much with the ooh, like smells more like ooh, Candace joked, curling her top lip up under her nostrils. But it was better than before, and since the smell part was worked out, it was time for her to explain the importance of moisturizing. Now that you don't stink, we gotta make sure you ain't dry. Candace pulled out a bottle of lotion the size of a shoe out of her backpack. Gregory's eyes widened, and his brows furrowed, leaving him with a look of astonishment and fear. What the? Where'd you get that? He yawped, slowly relaxing his forehead. Found this in my mother's bathroom, Candace explained as they walked up to the corner where Miss Post, the crossing guard, stood. Miss Post blew the whistle and they all walked across the street and to the left, headed down Portal Avenue. Hold up so I can do this, Candace said. Can't walk in lotion at the same time. The boys... The boys held up while Candace pumped the lotion into her hand, jamming the plunger down over and over again until she had enough to turn the sidewalk to slip and slide. Let's start with them paws, she said, reaching out for Gregory's right hand. She began with his fingertips, then worked her way up, making sure to give extra attention to the webbing in between, which made Gregory snicker. Then onto his wrist, up his forearm, and then she stopped. Elbows are important. Elbows? Gregory was confused. Elbows, Joey chimed in. You don't want Sandra thinking your elbow thinking your elbows are so dry that your arm is going to crack and break in half if you try to hug her, do you? Candace asked, all kind of serious. I mean, that wouldn't happen. Gregory looked at Joey and at Remy. They didn't say a word, so he repeated himself. That wouldn't happen, right? Joey just dropped his chin. Wow. What? Now Gregory was really confused. That wouldn't happen, he says, Remy scoffed. <laughs> Did you hear that? He said that wouldn't happen. Let me tell you something, Gregory Pitts. I've heard stories, horror stories, about dry boys who try to be romantic and they end up a pile of paint chips. You don't want to be paint chips, my brother, do you? No. Then let me do my magic on these elbows, Candace commanded. Then she went to work, first on his right elbow, circles with the center of her palm, then pinch her claw rubs with the tips of her fingers for optimal moisturizing. When his arm was as shiny as Dr. Devonzo's, Mr. Devonzo's bald head, she started over, this time with the left hand, fingers, wrist, forearm, and again, elbow. Okay, Gregory said, pulling away a little embarrassed by the attention. Plus, people were walking by, watching Gregory get worked on like some kind of car, but he could feel the difference. His fingers felt like they'd been freed from casts, lotion. Who knew? Not done yet, Candace pumped more lotion from the bottle. Not done, he squawked. What good is all this if we don't ever make it to her house? We will, Joey assured him. And the real question is, what good is it making it to her house when all she's going to do is wonder why your hands and elbows glistening and your face looks like some just got jumped by 17 giant pieces of chalk and they only gave you headshots? Remy threw fake punches in the air. Exactly, Candace said, another glob of lotion piled in her hand. Come here. Gregory came a little closer as Candace rubbed her hands together, 
Then she slapped him on his cheeks. Gregory squirmed, but Candace wouldn't let up, pressing at his face like she was trying to rub smudges of, uh, off of fresh sneakers, getting the creases out of his nose and the corners of his mouth. Oh, and his earlobes. Even Remy and Joey were a little, little puzzled by that one. But they figured Candace knew what she was doing. A school bus pulled up to the stop sign at the corner. The clack of the window dropping. Hey! A, bus, a boy from the bus yelled. Candace, Remy, and Joey turned and looked, but not Gregory. Candace clasps his face in her hands. You might as well give up. No matter how hard you try, that ugly mug won't come off. The boy spoke like his tongue was too big for his mouth. Spit was flying everywhere. Thank God, Candace shouted, because it might look like yours underneath. Then we'd really be in trouble, Remy followed. Joey didn't say nothing. Just started searching the ground for a rock or something to throw, but the bus moved on. Candace brushed it off, then went back to business, rubbing her palm on Gregory's forehead, polishing it. There, she said at last, stepping back, admiring her work. You look... Not bad. That was as far as she could go. Any compliment more than that was gross. I'm ready? Gregory asked, eyeing Candace's backpack nervously. Almost, Joey said, now unzipping his backpack. What now? Gregory took two steps backward. Well, here's the thing. There's only really one other thing you need to be ready for this. Something for your lips. What? Gregory took two more steps backward. Relax. I'm just saying, chap lips are gross, Candace finished. Like, for real. I mean, seriously, if we get to her house, you lay it all out on the table about how you feel about her and about how you would like to get her phone number and blah, blah, blah. And she says, who cares about a phone number? Give me a kiss. Joey bounces his eyebrows. Uh, hold on. Just so we clear, she won't say that, Candace clarified. How do you know? Remy chimed. Trust me, she won't. But she might be like, oh, he takes care of himself. Maybe one day I'll give him a kiss. Your first smooch, Remy teased like he'd kissed anybody, but he hadn't. But if your lips look like they look right now, which is white with that weird burn ring around your mouth, Joey started, but, but Candace cut him off. Stop licking your lips so much, bro. It's gross, and it makes you smell like spit. Which then added to the underarm stench makes you smell like throw up. And as your friend, and as a girl who happens to unfortunately like boys, I'm telling you, it's a deal breaker. Candace's words sizzled. They stung. Wow. Uh, thanks for your honesty, I guess, Gregory said. It's because I love you, Candace said, shrugging. So, with that being said, Joey pulled his hand out of his bag. In it was a Ziploc bag of goo. Got this from my mom's room. It don't come like this. It just I just couldn't risk taking the whole container out of there because she would, you know, and uh, she would know and ultimately murder me. And I don't want to die before Gregory gets a kiss. Or before you get one, Remy said. Or before you get one, Joey shot back. Wait, hold up, Gregory got back to business. I gotta use all that? No, from Candace. No, from Remy. Come on, man, Joey said with a laugh, pulling the bag open, the scent of menthol wafting out. Now this is medicated stuff, so take it easy. Why? If it's medicated, then it should be good for me. Gregory said, dipping his fingers in. And before Joey could reply, Gregory slapped the glob on his mouth and started rubbing it in. Joey's mouth dropped open. What? Gregory asked. And a nanosecond later said, Ooh, and then, uh, oh, oh, wait, oh, oh. He started fanning his mouth with his hand. It, it burns. He said, his eyes started to water. What do you mean it burns? Candace asked, hands on hips. Joey, what did you give him? Remy snatched the bag, scooped out a fingertip of the slime, and sniffed. 
Is this? Sniffed again. Held out his finger for Candace to smell. Is this? Vapor rub? Candace snatched the bag and took a big huff. It opened her chest immediately. Joey nodded sheepishly. Why would you give him vapor rub? Remy pretended to slap Joey on the head. We ain't have Vaseline, but this stuff got Vaseline in it, so I figured it's basically the same, Joey explained. Dude, that's the stuff my mother rubs on me when I'm sick, and it goes into my skin and makes the whole inside of my body cold, Remy said. And don't your chest be greasy after she do it, Joey asked. I mean, exactly. Joey gave one single hard nod. Not the same, Joey. Candace's face was somewhere between amused and annoyed. How was I supposed to know he was going to treat it like pudding? Burning, guys. Burning. Burning. Gregory panted. Candace and Remy began fanning Gregory's mouth, too. Just imagine, it's the burning sensation in your heart for Sandra. Joey pinched the bag closed, inch by inch. Remy leaned into Gregory's ear, almost whispering in a fake hypnotic voice, Sandra. Then, because he couldn't help it, he added, Sorry, man. And with that, they continued on, down Portal Avenue, until they got to Roger Street, the whole way gassing Gregory up, trying to take his mind off his fire lips by telling him how much they believed in him and how Sandra will too. What's not to love? Candace said, doing everything she could to keep a straight face. And when they finally got to Sandra's house, Remy, Joey, and Candace hung back. You ready? Remy asked Gregory. I, I, I think so, Gregory said, his lips still tingling. He pulled a piece of paper from his pocket walked up the steps to Sandra's house, rang the doorbell, then ran back down the steps because Candace had been telling him how girls don't like it when you're all in your space. You don't gotta be this far away, fool, she muttered, nudging him forward. The door opened. Sandra poked her head out, looking confused. She still had on the sweatshirt shirt she'd worn to school, light blue, yellow rectangles, a pattern that threw Gregory's water eyes from his burning lips, looked like a bunch of school buses falling from the sky. What's up, y'all? She said, cocking her head, clearly trying to figure out what was going on. Gregory said nothing, just stood there, shiny, shaking. Greg, Remy prompted, put his hand on Gregory's back, another nudge. Greg's got something to tell you, Sandra. Right, Greg? That was from Candace. Gregory nodded, unfolded the paper, and started reading. Sandra, you always got questions right in class, and I think that's good. And you never say nothing bad about me, at least not to my face. And so I just wanted to know if I could have your phone number. Candace looked at Joey, Joey at Remy, Remy at Joey, and Candace at Gregory. They couldn't believe he'd done it. They couldn't believe he'd just asked her. Sandra walked down the steps, came right up on Gregory, twitched her nose, squinted as if the light bouncing off Gregory's shining forehead was blinding her. He kept pursing his lips and blowing. What you doing? Sandra asked. You ain't trying to blow no kisses, are you? No, no, Gregory's voice jumped an octave, maybe two, almost whistle high. I, I wouldn't, it's just, um, uh, my, my lips are burning. Oh. Uh, why? Vapor rub. Why'd you put that on your lips? I, I, I don't... I, it's hard to explain. Why are you so greasy? That's hard to explain, too. Why do you smell like that? That's hard to explain? Sandra finished for him. Gregory nodded. Can you try? Gregory's hands started shaking the paper vibrating like dry leaves in the wind. He looked down and started reading the note of compliments again. Halfway through, he glanced up. Sandra was smiling, and Gregory thought maybe it was the kind of smile that came just before laughing. Then Gregory thought, but maybe not. All right, that's it for chapter nine. I really enjoyed that chapter because it shows you 
how strong a relationship within a group of friends can be, um, how supportive his friends were for him, all the way to Sandra's house. They're doing things to try to make his attempt at asking her out go smoothly. Uh, so there's questions that you need to answer on Schoology. Please make sure you do that. And we have one more chapter left. So I'll see you then. Thanks.